This time on Rad Rat Video, we're talking about what skate heaven would actually look like. Let's do it. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, a channel about skateboarding, skateboarding video games, skateboarding history, skateboarding trick tips, anything you can put the word skateboarding in front of is on this channel somewhere. And today we're answering your questions uh, that are submitted through my website, radratvideo.com. The first one is from Kunk Ape, and it's very, very long. I'm gonna try to um, cut it down. He's basically talking about what a fakey frontside tail slide is, because he's had this debate with actual pro skaters. He had this debate in comments with people, and apparently, for a lot of people's perspectives, a fakey frontside tail slide does not exist. And uh, even pros, he mentions a couple who would have called it something different. So the trick he's talking about, you roll up fakey, the ledge is in front of you, pop the tail, spin front side, land on the tail, you slide backwards and you land. Fakey front side tail slide. But a lot of the pros that he was talking to just say that's a no slide. It's a fakey, well, they'll either call it a fakey back tail, which doesn't make any sense. You approach front side, but you're sliding like a back tail, or they'll call it a fakey no slide. Um, and it's super confusing. The way fakey trick names work is nonsense, and I agree, and I'm gonna try to explain the way I feel about it. Now, I agree with you, uh, Kunk Ape, that a fakey front tail is the trick I described. It's a trick that I like to do. It's like a nolly front nose, but if you were the other stance, okay? Fakey front tail. It's the only thing I could really call that trick. And um, fakey trick names just get super confusing though. So picture a fakey crooked grind, okay? What did you think of? If you look at captions in Trans World and Thrasher and see what pros talk about and probably there's a Barracks Trickopedia episode on it, a fakey crook is a fakey ollie to switch crook, right? If you look it up, that's what it is. That's what everyone calls it, but it's wrong. Because you could do a fakey 5-0 into a crook, you can't, fi you can't pivot a 5-0 into a crook. You could pivot a 5-0 into a susky grind. You could pivot a 5-0 into a salad grind. You can't do a 5-0 into a crook without switching to the front truck, right? So you could do a fakey nose grind and then angle that, and that's a fakey crooked grind. Fakey crooked grind is like a fakey ollie to switch susky grind. It has to be, because a fakey nose grind is like this, a fakey 5-0 is like this, how is a fakey ollie into a switch crook, not a crooked 5-0? You're calling it a crooked nose grind. Like that doesn't make sense. Um, so like, yeah, the people uh, that you're talking about uh, doing a fakey nose slide is what they're calling it. That means that there is no such thing as a fakey tail slide because you can do a half cab nose slide, which is you approach, uh, you, you approach uh, front side, backside half cab nose slide, right? That's a half cab nose slide. And then what they're calling a fakey nose slide is popping the tail, sliding on the tail. They're calling that a fakey nose slide. They're both nose slides, but they're on opposite tails of the board. Like, it's nonsense. Trying to name fakey grind tricks, I really don't bother at this point because there's so many ways that people do it wrong. Like, they'll basically do it the same way you would off the nose. When you're doing a trick off the nose, you pop the nose and you are no longer in a different stance. You are just rolling normal, you pop the nose, but that's beside the point. You did, you know, you're up in the air and you land in a nose grind. It's called a nose grind just like it would be if you pop the tail. You pop into a nose slide or a crooked grind or a 5-0 or anything, a lip slide even, it's all called the same thing. But fakey is different because fakie is backwards. Fakie is not a stance that you pop the tail in. Fakie is you riding the opposite direction. So everything is different. And I hate that that's the way that it is, but it is. You can't have a fakie 5 be a 5 and then a crooked fakie 5 be a crooked grind. It doesn't make sense. So all of the tricks don't make sense, and I just have to describe how they are. So picture a fakie front side board slide. What does that look like to you? What a lot of people probably think is a roll up fakie front side, pop into a switch board slide. But no, because you've cleared your popping truck, that's a lip slide. A fakie board slide would be you roll up and you kind of go this way. I know it doesn't make sense. 
but that's the way it, it has to be. If you actually think about the rules, that's the way it has to be. Okay, what's a fakey nose blunt? Fakey front side nose blunt, what does that look like? I don't know what what everyone else would call it and the pros that you're talking about, but for me, you would fakey ollie into a switch front blunt. It's the same motion as a regular nose blunt, but rolling the opposite direction. That's the only thing that makes sense. But I wouldn't call it the fakey nose blunt. I would say fakey ollie into a switch blunt. That's how I would describe it. That's the only way you can actually be clear. So fakey ollie into a switch crook. I'll never say a fakey crook because it doesn't, it's wrong. And if I'm using it correctly, no one will understand what I mean. So I'll, I'll never say that. I'll always just describe the trick. So it, it, it's nonsense. The way that I'm talking about, the methods that I'm trying to use to describe tricks, it is consistent with skateboarding. You know, like fakie backside is different than, uh, you know, it's the same motion as regular backside, but rolling backwards. It's not really backside, it's backside, but backwards. It's a mess, I know. So I would just recommend doing what I do and just describing the trick rather than trying to use a technically correct name that no one's gonna agree with. Okay, the next question is from Egan who says, a majority of skateboarders don't seem interested in skateboarding's inclusion in the Olympics. Personally, I'm just not interested in another scored run contest format. I would be much more interested in skateboarding events like highest ollie, longest ollie, highest hippie jump, highest air, etc. While contests like this do pop up occasionally, the Olympics could become the official home and record keeper of these world records. These events also cater to the quantifiable raw athleticism of skateboarding rather than the subjective difficulty and style of a contest run. Do you think this format would better serve skateboarding and non-skateboarding audiences? Do you think do you think the industry would become more or less accepting of the Olympics? I fully agree with you. Um, it always feels weird to me that skateboarding, which is a subjective thing, you could watch two runs. One guy does a kickflip and then he does a tail slide. This guy does a heel flip and then a 5-0. Which one was better? You have to come up with a number, but like it's it's not it doesn't feel like the Olympics to me. Uh, the thing that I, I like to watch every now and then you'll see a video where they'll do like. Here's a side-by-side -side video of the 1932 100 meter dash and the one from last year, you know, and you'll see how much quicker people have gotten, how much better training has been and, and all that kind of stuff and how much faster the current record is based on the one from back in the day. And if you were to compare like the high dive, it's really not the same. But uh, the fact that the high dive is in the Olympics is kind of the same as skateboarding, right? You do a couple of flips, then you try to land perfectly without making too much of a splash. Uh, it's a subjective thing. Is it easier to do a backwards double front flip or a forwards double back flip? You know, you have to be, it's another subjective style trick based type of sport, right? So it makes sense that it would be in the Olympics just as a run, like a regular contest, but I don't really like it either. I do think having an athletic uh, records-based type of thing like you're talking about makes more sense. Having the high ollie at the Olympics uh, would make a lot of sense. It's just that your career in, in skateboarding is usually not very long. So it's every four years. You're gonna get the next attempt at another highest ollie run in four years from now. It just, it doesn't seem like skateboarding really works for that either. It doesn't work for anything because um, it's just like you would have to have, the way that those other sports work, there's other sorts of contests. There's like, they hold the local figure skating championship and then the nationals, and then you might qualify to be on the Olympics team and stuff like that. You would have to have all this stuff for skateboarding. Skateboarding doesn't have that. You know, like you said, a highest alley contest, every couple years, someone will randomly do one and it's never the same group that puts on that contest, right? So to have, a consistent one so you could place and then get into the Olympics that way. I just don't see that happening either. I don't think it works no matter what. Um, the way that they're doing it is consistent. You know, snowboarding is in the Olympics. Same thing with the super pipe runs and all that type of stuff. But yeah, I think it would be it would make more sense to have actual records like that. But I don't see that happening. So that's my thoughts on that.
Okay, the next question is from Ethan Chase, who says, why do I hear so much hate on Mullen? I think he's an awesome skater and person, but I see a lot of people commenting on YouTube videos of him saying he's overrated. He uh, didn't do anything for skateboarding. Uh, I just think it was weird. Like, it's okay if he's not your favorite skater, but he did do a lot for skateboarding. I don't know if they're jealous or they don't like the praise he gets. I don't know. What do you think about it? Have you ever seen anything like this? Okay. So he did invent a lot of stuff, and he gets a lot of credit from me. I haven't seen a lot of people making this uh, this argument. The biggest argument against him I see is his style. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but there is an argument to be made that even though he invented the basis of every trick, he invented ollies and kick flips and heel flips and backside flips and 360 flips and all this kind of stuff. He invented all this stuff. But if he didn't, somebody else probably would have very soon after. Okay. Um, so I have a video about who invented the, the Ollie. There's actually some debate about whether it was stolen. And anyway, there's this, there's a section in there about the flat ground Ollie. So Mullen invented the flat ground Ollie. I believe it was 1982, but Steve Rocco was doing frontside pop shove it to 1979. If you want the exact dates, you'll have to watch the video. I'm remembering uh, a bit of that, but he's talking about actually clearing obstacles. I think it was like a broomstick, like doing a pop shove it and clearing stuff and landing and uh, doing it up a curb and stuff like that. So he was catching air, right? And landing without doing a no comply or a bonus or anything. He was rolling, getting air, landing on something. It was a pop shove it, but if enough time went by and if a bunch of people learned that from him and they saw him doing front shoves and they, somebody probably would have figured out how to do a straight ollie if it weren't for, for Mullen. If a lot of people learned how to do a flat ground straight ollie, somebody would have figured out that you could flip it once you're in the air. Uh, and somebody else would have invented the kickflip. The fact is though, they didn't. And who knows how long it would have taken. Now, I've had a, I had an interesting conversation with somebody about um, how Newton invented calculus, right? So if you go back, this was like the late 1600s, I think, when he did this. Uh, Newton, probably one of the smartest people to ever exist on Earth. He uh, figured out gravity and all this kind of stuff, and he invented calculus. And you think, how do you just invent math? Like this had to be one of the smartest people, and he was, but there was another guy in Germany named uh, Leibniz who also invented calculus at the same time. And from what I know of history, uh, they both independently invented it at the same time. And they both thought the other one stole it from the other one. Because what are the chances that two people exist on earth at the same time that can invent a new kind of math? And the person I was talking to was saying, it's actually really likely because they, they are from the same environment. They're both coming up with the same challenges. They're both trying to figure out how how to calculate when something falls. I don't know, you know, whatever they needed calculus for back in the day. They're both being faced with these same kinds of problems and they both came up with a similar way to solve them. It took a lot of intelligence to get there, but uh, you know, if any major invention was not made at that time, it would have been made soon thereafter from somebody else who was facing the same challenges and had the same experiences in life and was capable of it as well. So um, I don't know how much I agree with that uh, in general, but in skateboarding, it seems to make sense. Like I was saying, people would figure out how to get off the ground. It's a pretty important thing to be able to get off the ground on your skateboard. Um, so you might have figured out how to do an ollie on flat. You could do it on in pools. Maybe you could have taken it to a bank and then you realize I'm actually not like rocking off of the coping. I'm actually like scooping the board around. Maybe I can do that on flat. Maybe I can do it without spinning and it would have turned into an ollie from there. There's a lot of different ways that these things could have come about, but they didn't. It was all invented by Mullen in the early eighties. And I get a ton of, I give a ton of credit to him for being able to do all that stuff. Uh, just the way that your brain has to work to just be that far ahead of the rest of the world where people are just trying to figure out how to do some of the basics and he's just inventing, oh, well, I figured out how to do a straight kickflip. Why, why not a 360 flip? It would have taken me decades to realize that I could do more than this crazy thing I just invented. So I, took, I think it took a really special mind. Uh, we would have caught up eventually, but who knows how, how much further behind skateboarding would be now. 
Now your other, or the other point I was gonna make was the only thing I really see people complain about is his style. If you go back and you watch his video when you beat Tony Hawk 2 or whatever, and you watch his, his footage, he does have a lot of stuff where he lands and he leans and he kick turn and stuff like that. But that footage is all really old. Those tricks that he was doing are from the the uh, the early 90s for the most part in the, the Plan B uh, videos. And if you watch any of the Plan B videos, uh, everyone's parts were like that. There were actually fake lines in those uh, in people's parts back then where they would do a, a, a trick. They would, it would cut to a different camera angle. You would land the trick and then continue the line. But you could tell that it, there were different clips because there was no second cameraman, you know? Like they would cut from different stuff. Uh, they would have lots of stuff that was really sketchy where you could tell they were about to step off or bail and it just cuts. That's just how video parts were back in the day. So Mullins were sketchy too because standards were just a little bit different and nobody cared. As long as you landed the trick, or it looked like you landed it and you could cut quick enough, then it was fine. Most of those parts, people aren't watching now. You don't really watch the average part from 1993 right now, but you might watch his. And when you see Mullen do a really sketchy trick, you think he's a really sketchy skater, but you just gotta think about the context. Um, if you watch stuff, when he was skating freestyle, you could watch him. There's a video on YouTube. It's like Rodney Mullen parking lot practice 1984 or something like that. And just watch him skate around. He just, every single trick, lands everything perfect. He skates for like 10 minutes. I think he, he might bail like once or twice in 10 minutes. And he just does a trick, boom, it's perfect. And he does something else. But, you know, in the 90s, trying to film stuff, it was just different standards. So I've seen people complain about his style, but I don't really think that's fair either. Almost nobody had good style at the time. And he did do a lot for skateboarding. So, yeah, I'm a huge fan of Mullen. He is my favorite skater of all time. Um, so I'm with you on that one. Okay, last question is from Toby, who says, if there was a heaven or afterlife designed specifically for skaters, what do you think it would look like? What legendary spots or parks would be included? Would different eras from skateboarding be be available to choose from, like the San Junipero episode from Black Mirror? I haven't seen that. How would the skill level or progression of skaters look? Okay. For skill level and progression, I think in Skate Heaven, let's just buy into the idea that there is a Skate Heaven, you get a specifically themed heaven based on what your biggest hobby was. I don't know. Uh, okay, so in Skate Heaven, I think your body is a normal human body. You're not superhuman. You're not like Superman. You don't have powers. You don't, you don't do anything that normal people can't. You just have the ideal body from when you were 25. Okay, so like... If you had worked out every day and you were in super good shape and you ate really good food from the moment you were born, like the perfect body that you could have had, uh, that's what you are in skate heaven. And you progress skating like normal. You learn tricks and you push things and you keep advancing at the same pace you would normally. But you're in heaven, so you have all the time in the world. Um, now, I think you still get tired. You can only skate for a couple hours and you go home or to your cloud or whatever, and you rest or you sleep. I don't know if you sleep in heaven, but uh, so you still get tired, you still skate, it feels like normal skateboarding. And I think you still get hurt because I think you have to. If skateboarding had no danger to it, I think it would lose, like doing gaps wouldn't really mean anything. If you could not get hurt, no matter how much you tried, you threw yourself off a huge gap and you just landed, you wouldn't, there would be no fear because there's nothing to be afraid of. So I think you would still get hurt, but only like, uh, you know, kind of you hit the ground hard. You wouldn't like break any bones or get a broken ankle or a sprain or anything like that. You would just like hit the ground and, you know, lose your breath and stuff like that. Like it would hurt, but you just, you're not in danger um, for a real wound. You can just get hurt a little bit. I think you have to. I think that's the only way that you can actually still be challenged by gaps and stuff like that. But I don't think there would be real life spots in there. I don't think there can be because, so here's, here's my theory on it. Picture that spot you really want to go to that you see the pro skate all the time. Like pier seven is a, like a, a spot where I would love to go do a manual on because that's what the pros did back in the nineties. They were all going there doing different kinds of manual tricks and all that. If I were to go there in heaven and do a kickflip manual on the on Pier 7, 
it wouldn't have the same feeling to it than doing it for real wood because there's no risk because there's no like security guards going to come kick you out or there's no people that are uh you know fighting over there and you have to find the right moment that you can go there and you can actually get your trick you know you've only got 20 minutes to get the trick before you get kicked out and that type of stuff none of that stuff would exist because that would be kind of masochistic i think to really want people to kick you out <laughs> of, of the spots in heaven like that that doesn't make any sense to me and so if, if it would feel worse to land a trick there than it would to do it in real life. You know, you wouldn't really hang with the guys who actually did tricks there on earth. You are skating a replica in a perfect environment. I don't think it would feel right. I think it would feel like you're cheating. And so because of that, I don't think there would be actual spots there. There was a contest back in the day. It was the Maloof Money Cup. And they had a uh, Carlsbad Gap, Gap recreation, but it was perfect. You know, there's like skate park flooring, you know, polished concrete. The, the landing was polished concrete and flat and perfect. The actual spot, you have to turn right before it. There's a, a sidewalk crack that you can kind of get your wheels caught in. The landing is a little bit uphill. To do an actual trick at Carlsbad was a big deal when it existed. Doing it at a replica that's very similar to it, a grass gap that's about the same size, not that big of a deal. I think that would be the same problem in heaven. Ideal circumstances, you have the perfect body. For you to do a trick at this spot that someone did on earth would not be that interesting. So I don't think you could have the same spots. I think what it would be, would be essentially like a skate three city. Not necessarily that city, but it would be like a big city where everything is skatable. And you could even do the thing you can do in skate three where you pause it and you can like turn off pedestrians and traffic and stuff. Um, cause why not? So yeah, that's what I think it would be. It would be like a skate three city that you could go around. You could skate all these different spots that are all new. They may be inspired by real life spots, but I don't think there's any actual real life spots and you can actually pause. I don't know how you do this exactly, but you can like, uh, have people around or you can dismiss them. You can have traffic or not. You could have that kind of control. Do you want to feel more Earth-like or do you not? Having that, I think that would be very cool. Uh, people getting in the way, it would feel more realistic, but it, it wouldn't be as fun. You, sh you, you can turn those, those off. So yeah, it would be like skate three, except real life, real physical body, and you can skate as much as you want, um, and then you can go home. So being able to travel would be a big deal because it's a big city, with a lot of spots and it maybe it changes all the time maybe it's one city but every morning when you get up there's new stuff and it is like shuffled around and things have changed i think that's that's probably the best you wouldn't get a new city every couple months like you, it would be a constantly evolving city and you would be able to travel around um you can't fly as a person because you have to have regular human body and physics for skateboarding to feel right but you have like a flying cloud or something like that and you can like fly around the city and check out spots and you can pick your spot. That's, that's what I think skater heaven would be like. It would not be like the Tony Hawk two bonus, uh, level. I hate that level. It's terrible. Uh, there's like an evil vengeful God and he always la laughs at you and you fall into a volcano. I don't think that's it. <laughs> I think it's more like, more like a skate three city that's constantly changing and you can skate and you have the ideal physical body uh, in it. So yeah, interesting question. That was fun to think about. Uh, ridiculous to think about, but yeah, that was kind of a fun thought experiment. But that's it for now. If you have questions, go to radratvideo.com. There's a, a form right there on the homepage. You can submit your own and it might make it into another video. You can also buy a shirt while you're there. I've got I think four different colors available. So check those out. And that's it for now. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.